Hello, it's me. I'm doing another Lagrangian problem. This one I actually put on my test, so it's got a double purpose, right? And it's not too hard. I'm not going to use SimPy for this. I'm just going to do it. I am going to model it. I'm not going to. I'm going to plot a position. I'm not going to make a, a 3D model of it. It's not too bad. So the the situation is we have a wire like that, and the wire starts right here, and it's tilting up at some constant angular uh, speed, and then there's a bead that can slide on the wire. So we're going to use the Lagrangian mechanics. Lagrangian is the kinetic energy minus potential. And then this is the Euler-Lagrange equation that we can use to solve for the equation of motion. And I don't think I need to describe that if you're here already. But that's that. So the first thing we need to do is say, well, how many degrees of freedom do we have for this thing? And you may think, well, it's moving in two dimensions, so it has two degrees, but it doesn't, right? It's only moving in one dimension. It's fixed on this wire. And yes, the wire can move, but that's not something that's free to move. It's set to move. So that means we only have one degree of freedom. So let's call this uh, variable the distance from the bottom. We'll call that S. Now, I do need to find the kinetic energy, and you could probably find that through intuition by saying, oh, well, it can move this way, and it can move in a circle. And so if I combine those two things together, I could get it using you know, uh, rotational kinetic energy. But I'm not going to do that. I'm going to do it the better way. I'm going to say I'm going to use uh, Cartesian coordinates. So if I know the Cartesian coordinates, then I know the kinetic energy is 1 half x dot squared, where I should say x dot is dx dt. We just write it that way. That's the x velocity squared plus the y velocity squared. In Cartesian coordinates, that works. So all I need to do is to get the x and y and coordinates of this in terms of s and omega, right? Because this angle right here is omega t. Uh, then I can get the kinetic energy. So let's do that. This isn't too hard. X is going to be equal to uh, this distance right here, which is the uh, position S times this times the cosine of this angle. So that's going to be equal to S cosine omega t. And then Y is going to be S sine omega t. Now I can take the derivatives of these and, and and square them. That's not too hard. Uh, so let's do that. X dot. If I take the derivative of this with respect to time, I actually have two terms that depend on time. S changes with time, and time changes with time. So I'm going to use the product rule. So the derivative of this is going to be equal to S dot times cosine omega t. Now I have to take the derivative of this. So the derivative of cosine omega t is negative sine omega t, and then I have to take the derivative of omega t. So I'm going to get negative s omega sine omega t. Now let's do the same thing for y dot. So that's going to be equal to s dot times sine omega t, not sine, sine, sine omega t, and then I'm going to get plus s omega cosine omega t. So now I want to square both terms and add them together. So x dot squared is going to be equal to this squared. So I have two terms. So I'm going to get this term squared, s dot squared, cosine squared, omega t. And then I'm going to get the cross term. I'm going to get two of those. So it's going to be minus 2 s dot s omega cosine omega t, sine omega t. And then I'm going to get this squared, so I get plus s squared, omega squared, sine squared, omega t. Now let's do it for y dot squared. y dot squared is going to be s dot squared, sine squared, omega t. Now I'm going to get a cross term, so I'm going to get this plus, because I have a plus there. So I have plus 2 s dot s omega, cosine omega t, sine omega t. And then I get two of those, a square of those, s squared, omega squared, cosine squared, omega t. OK, now when I add these two together, it's not so bad. x dot squared plus y dot squared. So you will notice that if I take these two terms and add them together, I can factor out an s dot squared. And then I have cosine squared plus sine squared, which is 1. These two terms are the same except for the negative sign, so they cancel. Oh, again, over here, I can factor out 
s squared omega squared. So now I can go ahead and write the kinetic energy. The potential energy is just mgy. So I can write the kinetic energy and the potential in the Lagrangian. So I have T equals 1 half m s dot squared plus s squared omega squared u is mu. u is equal to m times g times y, which is s sine omega t. Sorry. Okay, so now I can write down my Lagrangian. Oh, let's just check. Does this have the correct units? It doesn't actually have to have units of kinetic energy, uh, but it does. So I have uh, s dot, that's a velocity, a position velocity, so that's meters per second squared. Meters squared per second squared. Here I get meters squared and then radians squared per second squared, so I get meters per second, meters squared per second squared there. And then this has units of mgy, so that is units of energy too. So L is one half m s dot squared plus s squared omega squared minus mgs sine omega t. Now I can do the Euler-Lagrange equation. I only have one variable, so I only have one equation. I'm going to write it over here. Partial of L with respect to S minus the time derivative of the partial of L with respect to S dot is equal to zero. So let's do this first part. The partial of L with respect to S. So I'm looking through here and finding where are S terms. There's one right there. So I have one half m S squared omega squared. And it's just S the partial with respect to s, so I can treat everything else as constant. It is constant anyway. So I can just use the power rule. I'll bring the 2 down, and I get uh, 2 over 2, which is 1. So I get m s omega squared. Okay, any other s terms? One right there. So again, it's just a, it's just a power rule. So I just get minus m g sine omega t. Now let's do this part the partial of L with respect to S dot, and then we'll take the time derivative. Now I'm looking for S dot terms right there. That's the only one. So I, I again use the power rule and I get M S dot. Now I can take the time derivative of this. So I can say the time derivative DDT of M S dot is gonna be M S double dot, right? Because M is constant, so it doesn't really matter. So this, minus this has to be equal to zero, or this is equal to this. So now I get m s double dot equals m s omega squared minus m g sine omega t. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and cancel the m from both sides, and I get my differential equation. s double dot equals s omega squared minus g sine omega t. Now that was the, the, was the part I wanted for the, for the test. Let's just check a couple things though. What if omega equals zero? If omega equals zero, then it stays horizontal, right? So in that case, zero minus zero, I get s double dot is zero. That seems to make sense. Um, it doesn't go anywhere. Now, I, I could have done this a different way. I could have started with uh, some other function for, I could have added a phase in there and you'd get something a little bit different. Um, but I think that's okay. Yeah. So let's go ahead and model this in Python. And so I'm gonna model this the normal way by breaking it into small time steps, delta t, equals 0 0.01. I need to have numbers for everything. But in that case, I can assume during each time interval, s double dot is constant. So s double dot is the change in s dot with respect to time. So it's s2 dot minus s1 dot over delta t. So s2 dot equals s1 dot plus s double dot delta t. So I can find the velocity at the end of the time interval if I know it at the beginning and I calculate s double dot from this equation. Then I can do the same thing for s. So I can say s2 is s1 plus s2 dot delta t. Yes, I'm going over that fast because I don't want to do it. 
and then just do it for the next interval, the next, the next, next. And that's why I'm going to do it in Python. So I do need to pick some values here. Um, I need to know, I don't need to know the value of the mass, but I need to, uh, an omega. I'm going to need an initial S. I'm going to need an initial S velocity. And after that, I can go, go to town. Okay, let's jump over here to Python. Hello, Python. Okay, I'm going to, I'm going to actually start off with a graph. So G1 equals graph. Uh, I'm going to actually plot the trajectory of the mass. I usually shut my windows. I didn't shut my windows. Is that bad? Um, so let's plot uh, x title of, no, x title of x, y title of y. And I do need to give it a width. If it, oh, that'd be too big. Width equals 500. Height equals 250. And I actually want to make two lines. I want to make a dot, moving dot, to show the, the location of the mass, but I also want to make that, that the wire. Uh, so let's say FW, that's the wire, it's a G curve. And let's just leave it as black. And then uh, FS, that's going to be the plot for the, F, for the, the mass, it's going to be a G curve, uh, color equals color dot blue, and dot equals true. No, true. No, true. Ah, <laughs> true. <laughs> okay. So dot true when you plot this, whenever it moves the thing around, it's going to leave a dot at the, at the location. So I can I can essentially make an animated graph, which will be really nice. Now I need to pick my other values. T is zero. DT is zero point zero one. That's delta T. Uh, S. I need a starting S value. Let's say it's at. I'm gonna. It's a mine's a meter stick. It's a meter long stick. So I'm gonna start at halfway, 0.5. Um, S dot is zero. Now I do need um, omega. Let's say it's two. I'm just picking a value there. The stick. Um, let's make the rate, the length of the stick. I'm gonna call it R equals one. So I'm gonna. Need, I need to pick two points to plot uh, on on that thing. And I'm gonna just first plot the the S, and then and then I'll be fine. Uh, I think that's good. So now I can say while, uh, let's say while T is less than one, that's not the best option. Rate 100, so I'll do it in real time. It'll take five, uh, one second. Uh, the first thing I'm going to do is to calculate S double dot. So I, I already have that. So I'm gonna say S double dot DD dot, you can call it whatever you want. It's gonna be S times omega squared minus G, which I don't have. G equals 9.8. G times sine omega times T. Now with that, I can update S dot, S dot, S dot, plus S double dot times DT, and then S equals S plus S dot times DT. Now I want to plot X and Y, right? So I need to calculate X and Y. I have that equation. Uh, going back over to my paper over here, I'm just going to use my equations for x and y. x equals s times cosine omega times t. y equals s times sine omega times t. Now I can plot it. So I can say fs dot plot. The x coordinate is x. The y coordinate is y. Increase time by a time step, and that time d plus dt, and that should be it. Let's run it and see what happens. I mean, that's a pretty simple program right there. You got to admit it. Okay, so it, it does something weird, right? Because I have my, my hoop going all the way around, which is fine. Um, let's just put in that hoop thing, uh, the wire. So to do that, I'm going to go down here. I need to make an... So the dot's nice, right? Because it shows you how that dot moves. Uh, but... Could I put, no, I, I want to draw, redraw the whole line. So let's go down here and say FW data equals an empty list at the beginning of the loop. And then down here, I'm going to put two points in that list, the origin zero, zero, and then the point I want to calculate. So let's calculate that point. I'll just do it all in one fell swoop. So I'm going to say FW, F, FW data equals FW data plus the point zero, zero. That's the origin. Now I'm gonna add the other point, FW data 
equals FW data plus the point uh, R times cosine omega times T, R times sine omega times T. That's the location of that end. Now I need now I need to plot that list as an animation. So I can say FW dot data equals FW data. And that should animate it. And let's do this to point three seconds. And let's, let's run it in, in slower speed, 20, just because. So now it's not in real time. But it is working, so there's my stick. Okay, let's run that for a little longer, 0.7. And you'll notice the graph is, so that's pretty good. I'm pretty happy. I really, I, maybe I want to run this. I, I should stop it right there because the bead got down to the origin. Um, let's do this while s is greater than zero and s is less than r. That way it will just keep spinning around until it reaches the end of the ring. Let's try that. This may be a terrible idea. I'm going to run real time. Okay, there. So I just stopped. Now, what if I give it some, since it's falling down, um, what if I rotate it faster, right? What if I rotate it faster, what's gonna happen? So if I increase this omega to say four, notice that it ends up at the end of the stick, right? Because if you fling that thing really quick, then it's going to uh, fling it out of the, the stick. You can think of the centrifugal force idea it ends up over there. So maybe somewhere in between there, I can get it to be a little bit more stable. Let's just try three. There's a whole bunch of cool things you can play around with this. That's pretty cool, right? So it started to go, but you, you have that other component in here, the gravitational force that pulls it down. Um, okay, I think I'm done with this and I never even saved this. Bead on rotating wire. That was dangerous, right? You should always save. Okay, so I will give you the code to this uh, and a link to my classical mechanics playlist uh, with a bunch more Lagrangian examples if you want that. Uh, but I don't think this wasn't too bad. Whenever you have just one degree of freedom, it's usually not too bad. You can usually do it on paper. You don't have to use SimPy. Uh, but it's still a really fun problem. That's that.